What's good, YouTube? It is your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Sports TV. And I am back with another video. This is a recap, talking about two big names in the sport of boxing that fought this weekend. IBF middleweight champion, uh, Gennady Golovkin, who returned to the ring after being out of the ring for like 14 months to defend his uh, title against his mandatory Camille Saramonte, or Saramente, or however you pronounce his name. Um, the fight went pretty much as everybody expected. It was a whitewash from beginning to end. The only thing people may have expected was a, a quicker stoppage um, than the one he got in the seventh round. But he dropped his opponent four times. The guy had absolutely no power to keep Golovkin off. He showed heart and resiliency, but he didn't have the skills, the footwork, anything to deter an older aging warrior in Golovkin um, and making him have to adjust his game plan. It was pretty much jab, left hook, right hand, body shots. I'm going to keep pressing forward. I'm going to keep pressing forward. And eventually my power is going to break you, which it did. He dropped him with a jab. He dropped him with a left hook. He dropped him with a right hand. I mean, the power is still there for Gennady Golovkin, who at 38 years old is clearly past his prime, but he's still very much capable of being a select few fighters at 160 and potentially at 168 depends on who it is he's facing. But if you was expecting um, the Golovkin from 2014, 15, 16, 17, you're sadly mistaken. He's not that guy anymore. He's coming off of a 14 month uh, layoff. Uh, like I said, he's 38 years old. His confidence had to be shaken. You know, he did fight Canelo twice. First fight, a lot of people thought he was uh, cheated out of a victory. You know, it was a split draw. Then the second fight, he lost um, by unanimous decision. And he was pursuing a third fight. And still is pursuing a third fight with Canelo, who we'll talk about later on in this video. Um, you know, to try to right those wrongs that he feel in his heart that shouldn't have been losses or drawn in the first place. But, um, you know, his reflexes are okay. You know what I'm saying? The power still there. Like I said, he has an excellent jab that many of his past opponents uh, will put on the level of, uh, you know, a typical power punch, whether it's his right hand or left hook. You know what I'm saying? His jab is that powerful. Um, he showed that he still can take a punch, although, I mean, Sermonta, or uh, Sermonta, excuse me, only had five knockouts in like 20 plus fights. So the threat of him knocking out or even didn't the chin of Golovkin was less than 5%. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, I mean, taking away from this performance, uh, like I said, it, it's nothing to go, wow, Golovkin is back. He's going to be going through these top upper echelon guys at 160 and 168. Um, what I take away from it is that his jab is still very effective. His chin um, is still good. His power is still there. Um, his punch placement is good, but he's a little slower, even though he wasn't an ultra hand speed guy anyway. You know what I'm saying? His punch placement is still good. His footwork is still good. You know what I'm saying? He's a terrific body puncher. So, I mean, he is a threat to anybody. Demetrius Andre, um, Jamal Charlo, Billy Joe Saunders, uh, Canelo. You know what I'm saying? Uh if he gets a chance to get in the ring with those guys, you know, but don't expect him to be dazzling with the knockouts and, and the one sided performances um, that you are, that you grew accustomed to because that Golovkin is long gone. You know what I'm saying? He did what he was supposed to do. He got out, uh, he got his overmatched opponent out of there. Probably should have been sooner, but like I said, with age and rust and wear and just the, the wear and tear on your body of doing something so long, you're going to start to lose uh, some of your uh, your magic and some of your greatness. But he's still a very capable fighter. Um, and I would love to see him in against a Demetrius Andre, a Jamal Charlo, a Billy Joe Saunders, a Caleb Plant, or whoever it may be between 160 and 168 because he's still a valuable um, fighter. And, and as long as he holds that title, that IBM middleweight title, <clears throat> he's going to warrant uh, consideration for big fights moving forward into 2021. So, you know, overall, I give him his performance a, a B, B minus. You know what I'm saying? He did what he's supposed to do. Um, but you really won't be able to gauge how effective and how uh, much he still has left in the tank until he steps up and fights one of the aforementioned fighters I just named. So hopefully we can get him in a big fight um, in 2021. 
uh, to see what he really is at the age of 38. Now, let's go and talk about the main event, the, the main course meal. You know, Canelo Alvarez, boxing's cash cow returned after being out of the ring for over a year. He finally got his divorce from Golden Boy Promotions and Oscar De La Hoya. And now he's on a new path trying to continue on building his legacy, which he's done a great job so far of doing. You know, he's been in the ring with Floyd Mayweather, Miguel Cotto, Austin Trout, Here's Lenny Lord, Shane Mosley, uh, Daniel Jacobs, uh, Sergey Kovalev. You name it. He's been in the ring with some Hall of Famers and some very good fighters uh, throughout his career. And last night, he was the overwhelming favorite heading into this matchup with former WBA super um, middleweight champion Callum Smith, who had a tremendous height advantage. It was like seven inches over... Um, you know, Canelo, but we all knew Callum Smith, he's a good fighter, but he struggled with a kickboxer. I can't think of his name. I'll pop it up in the video. Um, he lost, in my opinion, to John Ryder. He was fortunate to get that uh, unanimous decision victory in that fight last year. But I mean, this is a guy who hot and cold. He knocked out Hassan and Dunn. Then he knocked out George Groves, two credible former champions. Um, then, you know, but he hot and cold. Like I said, he fights up to competition, fight down to competition. You know, a guy that has the height and reach um, that he possesses should be in for easier fights. Yet, he's always in a firefight. He's always in a phone booth type of fight. Instead of using his jab, um, his combination punching, and his reach to make it easier, he finds himself in these situations where he's struggling and people are questioning him as a legitimate champion and as his chances against the fellow champions. But now he's no longer a champion. We ain't got to worry about that no more. The action in the ring was good. I mean, he did get beat up for 12 rounds. But he had his moments. You know, he got a nice uppercut, nice left hook. He threw some right hands. But it was all Canelo. Canelo teed off on him when he wanted to. The head movement of Canelo Paul's is just was tremendous. He was slipping shots, he was rolling shots, he was countering, he was landing um body shots of his own. And it's like Smith would just retreat to the ropes. He would retreat to the ropes and and, and kind of fight lazy instead of being disciplined, pumping out the jab, turning Canelo, you know, making Canelo switch up things, making him overcompensate, making him overthink. He didn't do any of that. He made the fight pretty much easy for Canelo Alvarez. You know what I'm saying? When you that tall and you crouch over and you just retreat back to the ropes, you just inviting your opponent to come rip shots to the body. And that is exactly what Canelo Alvarez did. We know Canelo is a terrific body puncher. He's a terrific body puncher. And he hurt Callum Smith numerous of times in that fight to the body. You can see, like, in round, what, seven, eight, or nine, one of them rounds, he had unleashed a left hook, and you can just see Smith drop his hands, take a deep breath, and kind of retreat. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, had nothing. Had nothing. I know this fight was on four weeks notice, but you knew the situation you was getting yourself into. You know Canelo from the years. You know what type of fighter he is. You know what type of fighter you are. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's not idea to just get a fighter this magnitude um, on four weeks notice. You probably want eight to ten weeks to train. But when the number one cash cow in the sport of boxing and the top three pound-for-pound -pound fighter come knocking on your door as a champion... As a guy who's powerful, you take on the challenge, which Smith did. But he didn't give himself the best chance to win. Like I said, maybe, I mean, Canelo's the better fighter. But like I said, I feel like if he would have jabbed more, let his hands go, stayed off the ropes, it would have been a much better fight. You know what I'm saying? Because Canelo, as great as his upper body movement is, he, he's not the best in terms of lower body movement. His footwork, foot speed is not tremendous whatsoever you know what i'm saying that's why he struggled with you know floyd mayweather jr he struggled with austin trout he struggled with Ares landy lore you know he struggles with guys that can move laterally side to side you know what i'm saying that can switch it up and i'm not saying that smith is that guy whatsoever but you know what i'm saying he has decent enough footwork to where he could have made some things work because he did land some shots on canelo you know what i'm saying but none of it faced canelo and canelo now is the Super, the WBA super middleweight champion as well as the WBC super middleweight champion. That vacant title was on the line. Um, and, you know, Canelo's legend continues to grow. 
People can people gonna question this victory. Is it legit? It is legit. I mean, Smith beat the guy who's the guy. He beat George Groves. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he earned that right as the former super middleweight champion of the world. Um, but Canelo, props props to him, man. He's a free man now. I mean, now he's a four division world champion. You know, he's held titles at 154, 160. Now 168, and, and last year when he thumped up Sergey Kovalev for that WBO 175 pound title. So, I mean, his legend continues to build. He continues to, you know, um, push the envelope. Um, and hopefully, you know, we see him in the ring with the likes of Demetrius Andre, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, David Benavidez. If he wants to go back up to 175, Dimitri Bivol, Arthur Beardabeef. There's a lot of guys. Jamal Charlo um, at 160. Hell, maybe a, a, a trilogy match with um, Gennady Golovkin. There's a list of guys that uh, Canelo can face. You know what I'm saying? And is, there's no shortage of uh, opportunities out there for him. He's also not tied with any network. He's a free agent. He can go and come as he pleases. That means he can work with uh, Bob Arum, ESPN, Al Heyman, uh, Showtime, PBC. He can work again with Eddie Hearn, The Zone, or hell, if he wanted to work with Oscar De La Hoya. On a fight one fight basis, he can do that. You know what I'm saying? But props to Canelo. He put on a tremendous performance. He did what he was expected to do. He went in there um, and he battered, beat up, outboxed, outfought, outclassed Callum Smith, and now he's the WBA super middleweight champion and the WBC super middleweight champion. That's a lot of tongue twisters, but look, those it man. Hey, good luck in that. He won. Canelo. One, will it set up a rubber match? Who knows? That's a big money fight that they always can go back to, whether it's 2021, 2022, 2023. The history and the genuine dislike uh, for uh, both men um, is going to always have that storyline so they can go back into that. But, I mean, both guys have a plethora of options. Golovkin wants to fight the best in his, his division at 160, but will somebody be a Tyson enough for him to go up to 168? Canelo said he wants to unify at 168. That means he has to fight Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders. But both of these guys are sitting in pretty positions. But Canelo is the man. He's the number one cash cow in the sport, arguably the number one pound-for-pound pound guy in the sport, and the rich keeps getting richer. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to Colossal Sports TV right now. Turn on those notifications to be notified every time I upload content. Drop those comments in the comment section down below. Check out my um, social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook videos. We will be shared over there. I am back. I am back. I am back for real this time. Until next time, I am out. Peace.